Unsilenced Voices of Young Tibetans is a podcast presented by the Foundation for Nonviolent Alternatives where young Tibetans share their personal stories, experiences, opinions and journey in exile. Tashi Dalek, Namaste and welcome to our FNVA podcast, Voices of Young Tibetans. We usher our second season of Unsilenced today and to mark this moment, Today, we discuss Tibet and the Tibetan movement from a Tibetan who was forced to undertake the arduous journey of crossing the Himalayas and after doing so, continues to carry the torch for a free Tibet in exilehood. Furthermore, today's episode would also bring light to the largest Tibetan NGO outside Tibet, the Tibetan Youth Congress, what they are, what they do, and how they function. So without any further ado, I welcome our guest, Sonam Siringla. So, Sonam Singla, firstly, could you introduce yourself and also tell us about your writings, which is something that I find only a few Tibetans doing, and your website as well at sunsnow.in. Okay, Damdila, thank you for having me. Uh, so, I was born in Tibet, then I escaped to Indi- India by tagging and ad- arduous journey of uh, climbing the high standing Himalayas, crossing the hills, rocky hills, crossing the cold icy rivers. And then after a month long journey, we reached Nepal, where we were received by the Tibetan reception center over there. From where after spending 15 or 20 days over there, we were sent to Delhi and then to Dharamshala, from where we were distributed into different Tibetan children's school. Uh, I was sent to TCV school, Suja, and I studied till 10th over there. And then I joined Kobabu for 11th and 12th, after which I joined Delhi University, where I uh, studied uh, political science honors from Hindu college, and where we were fortunate enough to meet and we had some good memories, Jamdila. And then after my bachelor, I joined uh, OP Jindal Global University, where I did my master in public policy. And during my college days, I had the opportunity to serve in uh, Regional Tibetan Youth Congress in Rohini. First year, I uh, was joint secretary. Then during my third year, I was elected as the president. So right after my uh, graduation, I joined the general body meeting of Tibetan Youth Congress and from there uh, I was elected as the general secretary and then re-elected uh, last year for the second term. So I have to serve here for the next uh, three years and uh, and I think it's a good opportunity because I always believe that I have more time for the course of my country than for myself and uh, I always say that I will make the best use of my only life uh, to fight for the rightful cause of my country and uh, to live up to the legacies of our forefathers. And that is the dream I dream every sleepless night of mine. So I will make the best use of uh, this uh, platform. Uh, Hopefully, I would be able to live up to the expectations of the Tibetans uh, inside Tibet in serving the common cause of Tibet. Yes. And Sonamla, yeah, as you mentioned, like we came across each other for the first time at Hindu College. And, you know, since then, I've seen you take a real firm stand on the Tibet issue and not, not only the Tibet issue, how we need to resolve the Tibet-China conflict, what path do we, especially as youngsters, need to go forth. And one thing that you do by yourself, regardless of your association with any organization, is your writings is your website so could you throw more light on that okay so i write uh, not because that i'm good at writing i write because we have uh, a story to tell we have uh, uh, something to something the world needs to know we have truth that the world needs to know and we are the voice of the voiceless tibetans who are buried behind the boundaries of the high standing himalayas who are censored under the censorship and under the control of the communist government so we have that responsibility so i always uh, write the sufferings write about the sufferings of the tibetans inside tibet and the struggles going uh, through by the tibetans outside tibet so i write them to make the world understand the tibet china issue and 
to make the world uh, understand about the you know struggles of the refugees yes that's why i write and uh, i started uh, blogging or i started my website wordpress website in 2019 i think 18 or 19 and since then i uh, started updating on the same and so i think it's the responsibility of all the tibetans you know to make the world understand the tibet issue either through writing or other mediums that's why i choose to write definitely so no man you know writing is something which connects people as well like we tend to say how you know engaging with people connects people but writing also connects people and this particular initiative by yourself definitely raises and shares the plight of tibetans to the rest of the world so mm. sonomla going following what you said before you are and you were one of the several tibetans who crossed the himalayas you know escaping from chinese atrocities in occupied tibet what were your reason in particular for undertaking this journey so back then back then i was too small to understand uh, why my parents they send me to india but uh, one of my uncle who was in india then pushed my parents to send one of their children to india to india to study under the guidance of his holiness the 14th dalai lama then out of five siblings i was the chosen one reason i still don't know so they asked me if i wanted to go to india uh, to study uh, in the schools set up by his holiness the 14th dalai lama then out of my curiosity you know i accepted their proposal i was too small to understand that i have to leave them for so many years then i accepted it and then uh, we started our journey uh, from the front you are led by the curiosity to see what's there beyond that mountain that river or then from the behind you know from the back you are chasing by the bullets so you have no turning back you have no choice so you keep on going and finally uh we were able to get to india and of course there is a hope that you will see the uh, root guru who is respected and revered by all the tibetans so with that hope finally i met uh here i think it's a worthwhile journey definitely so no man uh, something that really comes to mind about this is like when we were when i was in school as well in tcv we had those we had a number of tibetans sharing these tales but these days you know like as i think it's a known fact to all of us that the number of tibetans coming from tibet to india is decreasing and on top of that we have a large number of tibetans who are already in india you know migrating to the west in huge numbers so what is your thought on that sonamla so as a refugee we don't have any permanent address right so many of them they choose to travel they choose to move wherever they find a stable life uh, a good opportunity so many of the tibetans they choose to go abroad for different reasons some of them are going to find uh, going to find a stable financial source and uh, to get a better education opportunities and of course there is a brain drain is also there because many of the you know graduate tibetans they move to the west and they are working there in a totally different field so this is happening and this is a you know true fact and even if we go to the you know chapter visit the most of the participant most of the attendees were the you know elder generations you don't see many uh, younger tibetans who are working in the tibetan settlements or uh, who are participating in you know tet- tibetan settlement organized event so the fact is there and uh, there is both positive and negative uh, impact uh, there is the question of the sustainability of the tibetan settlements and then if the you know if we have a community collective community who are working together then that will contribute uh, either in preserving our uh, culture or in you know contributing in our freedom movement as a joint uh, you know uh, force but even if we are spreading out if all of the tibetans who are 
all sides, you know, uh, all around the world, they take their own responsibility and uh, contribute, do contribute in the our cause, then I'm sure they do will make a difference in promoting our awareness about the Tibet-China issue and then seeking support on the, you know, uh, Tibet issue. So that will make a difference. And since TYC, we have regional chapter in all the, you know, uh, Tibetan settled communities all across the world. We are organizing, you know, events, activities accordingly. You really, you know, this is a very, I think, talked about topic and something that a lot of Tibetans worry. What is, what are the Tibetans youngster up to? And the Tibetan Youth Congress being one of the largest, you know, NGOs which caters toward this particular section. You really brought out some very interesting points which we need to further discuss upon and, you know, expand upon. Because at the end of the day, we youngsters are the future of Tibet. Yes. And Sonamla, you mentioned you mentioned in your introduction, right? You are currently serving as the general secretary of the Tibetan Youth Congress, which as I mentioned a lot of time, it is the largest Tibetan NGO outside occupied Tibet. So can you tell us in brief what is the Tibetan Youth Congress? What is its vision and its core activities? And has it changed over the years? Uh TYC, Tibetan Youth Congress, is one of the largest uh, non-government organizations in Tibetan communities in exile. Uh, it was founded way back in 1970s by the uh, four freshly graduated uh, Tibetan students and government officials at the same time. So they were young Tibetans who are equipped with both modern and tra traditional, you know, education. So they found the importance of having an organize a separate organization, non-government organization, and with the guidance of His Holiness the 14th the Dalai Lama. Then it was founded way back in 1970. And the most important aspects of Tibetan Youth Congress movement is to fulfill the aspirations of the you know, um, majority Tibetans who are suffering under the Chinese oppressive and repressive policies in Tibet. And uh, all the activities of Tibetan Youth Congress are directed towards the fulfillment of its ultimate aim, the restoration of the rightful independence of Tibet uh, for the whole regions of Tibet, Uzang, Kham, and Amdo. So it was uh, the aims and objectives was there from the beginning, and it was it is still the same. So as far as the aims and objectives of Tibetan Youth Congress is concerned, the first is to dedicate oneself to the task of serving one's country under the guidance of His Holiness the Fourth Dalai Lama, and second is to promote and protect. Uh, national unity and uh, integrity by giving up all the distinctions based on the regionalism, caste, gender, etc. And third is to preserve and promote Tibetan unique culture and identity. And the fourth is to fight for the uh, complete independence of uh, Tibet. So based on these four uh, aims and objectives, TYC for the last 70 years has been organizing political campaign activities from uh, hunger strikes to picketing, fasting, demonstrations, uh, bike rallies, cycle rallies, etc. And, uh, and uh, we make sure the world understand what is happening inside Tibet. And uh, Tibetan Youth Congress also mobilized people for the uh, freedom struggle by providing information uh, and education and motivational guidance, uh, workshops, seminars, etc. And uh, because of TYC's, you know, effective political campaign works, Chinese Communist government is considering this organization as a terrorist organization because of which uh, many of the Tibetans who are working in this, you know, organization like me, uh, their parents, we cannot contact our parents and uh, even our parents in Tibet, our relatives in Tibet, they have no idea about the nature of the work we are doing here. And uh, TYC also organize uh, social service activities. And uh, since from its inception, uh, we have been uh, serving our community to elevate some of the most social educational problems in our community. And TYC is also a leadership training ground in exile, one of the leadership training ground. If you look at the Tibetan communities in exile, um, most of the community leaders, they have uh, something to do with TYC, either 
uh, in the regional chapter or in the Centrex. And because of through these trainings, and you see that a lot of Tibetans who are serving currently in Tibetan organizations all across the world, they are the former TYC members. Uh, so, and we also give workshops every year to the college going students and high uh, school students. And, uh, and, uh, and we also uh, organize cultural activities to preserve and promote uh, Tibetan unique culture and uh, so TYC overall, we have more than uh, 80, 80 regional chapters all around the world in more than 14 countries with uh, more than 35, 38,000 members all across the uh, world. So this is the brief introduction about TYC. Definitely, Sonam Siring. And as you mentioned, you know, like uh, the, you called about the bike rally. And I remember it was a few, year, few years ago that you were also actively a participant of it and we had a lot of you know TCV Suja friends who were also participating in that particular rally and you know these sort of rally really spreads the message of what Tibet is what its current situation is so yeah definitely the TYC is one of the leading organization who spearheads such movement and even during COVID like you mentioned social service right like I remember yes. seeing it, Dharmasala, like it was TYC along with other organizations as well but you were the ones who were championing it. So, yeah, definitely TYC is a very vital organization in our exiled Tibetan community. And just continuing on this subject, uh, every year, you know, I think it's a known fact that when His Holiness the Dalai Lama gives teaching in Bodh Gaya, be the Kala Chakra or even normal initiation, it is the TYC who initiates various drives which assists the pilgrimage and also those visiting Bodh Gaya. Can you tell us what sort of activity does TYC engage in there and how was your experience in particular this year? So, as I said earlier, TYC since from its inception has been rendering social services in our community to elevate some of the most social and uh, cultural uh, problems in our community uh, from building public toilet to uh, you know paving public roads and of course whenever his holiness uh, gives teaching kalatara teachings or any other teachings anywhere else uh, in india tyc offers our voluntary uh, services primarily aimed to assist the tibetans you know coming from uh, tibet and uh, but this year I wasn't there because I was the one who is staying back in office and walking over here. But so when we do our social service campaign work in Bodh Gaya, we divide our you know volunteers in different units. Uh, we set up announcement center uh, from where we do announcement in more than eight languages and make the public aware of the teaching proceedings. And time and uh, time again, we remind the devotees and pilgrims about the you know their security, their health, and. Uh, we have a loss and session, uh, loss and found session, and an emergency session to attend to the emergency needs of the you know devotees, and uh, they can also do the final ritual and cremation services for the devotees who passed away during the teachings. This year, one of the nuns from the uh, northeast region passed away, and we did the final rituals and cremations in both guy itself. And uh, we have uh, receptions and units at the bus stations and the railway stations uh, do day and night service on rotation basis. We make sure the public, you know, uh, get a safe passage to um, the venue. And we provide a Tibetan announcement facility at the Gaia railway station as well, and which gives a very uh, good vibe and very good feeling a sense of community a sense of you know welcoming to the devotees tibetan particularly tibetan devotees uh, coming from all across the world and uh, i when i was back in rohini in you know delhi in 2017 i got an opportunity to bring more than 30 uh, 30 uh, members tyc members from delhi to both gaya and that time we served in the you know camps where we are uh, doing a security duty day and night then one of our group uh, you know including myself we were sent to panna firstly they thought that uh, there won't be many tibetans who are coming to panna railway station so i was the leading member and we have only seven members uh tyc volunteers over there and then you know we are receiving lots of calls every day and uh, 
we are doing day and my service is very difficult at one time you know you are receiving more than three four buses of tibetans over there we sent them to both gaya and it was very tiring but at the end of the day you feel so proud and you feel so happy you know because you heard the only thing you heard is the thank you thank you thank you tyc thank you tyc so even though you are you know physically you are tired exhausted but your your mental presence you know your mental happiness makes you serve it continue so that time when i was serving uh, at the bus station then railway station then we were sent uh, to the you know tent centers where we uh, do uh, night and day duties uh, to do the security duties from there i write uh, one poem uh, which is being you know liked by many of my friends maybe i can share with you as well right now if it's okay definitely you can do that sonam you all yeah. of us would love that so tyc volunteers they wear a yellow suits yellow vest with the tibetan youth congress emblem and the identity number to every members so uh i was during that time i was uh, doing a security during a uh, security duty and i wrote a poem called yellow guard and because why i uh, named this poem yellow guard is because the tibetans inside tibet they called they are not naming tyc because of the political reasons they are called yellow guard uh, mommy say what they call so because we are all the tibetan volunteer tibetan youth congress volunteers they are wearing a yellow vest so i wrote the poem a uh, title yellow guard in the mid of cough and cold i am the yellow guard guarding tens and thousands of tent listing the hateful songs of innocent snoring here and snoring there killing the youthfulness of the silent night i am the yellow guard guarding the god's men in the mid of evils and devils yes this is the poem i wrote uh during the kalachara initiation way back in 2017 uh, when i was serving there so tyc has been arranging social services during uh, kalachara teachings and other teachings and of course other you know other times in tibetan community thank you sonam lal for sharing that you know wonderful poem and you know mentioning the term yellow guard like <laughs> I tend to think myself as someone who studies who looks after the Tibetan affair you know who is connected with but this is the first time that I personally heard that how you know the Tibetans inside Tibet are forced to call the Tibetan Youth Congress yellow guard so in some ways this is very sad but in another aspect it also it also shows a sort of resistance among our Tibetan sisters and brothers inside Tibet yes and true. definitely you know like uh, your organizations work in podga even this year you know i had a friend who went there and he came at the middle of the night at the train station and at the end of the day it was and it were your organization the tyc or the yellow card which is popularly known in tibet that came to help us tibetans so definitely kudos and on behalf of all tibetans i would like to thank the tibetan youth congress on this note thank you damdula uh, yes ma'am and like uh moving on like i think uh the president of tyc pombo uh, tundula and yourself uh in the late 2020 2022 i mean this year you toured many regions of india especially the frontier regions if i remember yes. including including tawang itself where you engaged with the tibetans and the locals so what were the voices and concerns of these very people especially in the context that with each passing day we hear and witness the bad situation worse and what were the necessary actions that we can take forth from this so uh, our president kombutundu and uh, i went for a speaking tour and chapter visit to the northeast regions of india where we have uh, many tibetan regional chapters over there so through a, for me it always feels you know special to go to the regions which is close 
which are you know close to Tibet, your homeland. So throughout the chapter visit, I had a good time interacting with the chapter members and the general Tibetan public. Uh, we make them aware of the critical situations inside Tibet, and we discuss about the ways in which we can strengthen the Tibetan freedom movement, and we discuss about the ways in which we can you know make them inclusive in our. Uh, community work, community freedom struggle activities, campaign activities as such. So I said earlier, most of the meeting participants uh, were unfortunately elder generations, not many young, you know, uh, Tibetans living in Tibetan community, but those who are there are, you know, taking their own responsibility, either it's in sustainability of the Tibetan settlements or in other uh, activities that can help preserving Tibetan culture and uh, identity. Uh, and uh, their common voice is clear, you know, TYC uh, needs to organize more campaign, protest campaign box that uh, includes the mass gatherings and mass protests, uh, you know, etc. And uh, and we also had a good opportunity to visit some of the, you know, Tibetan schools over there as well. And the, the children's, their, you know, aspirations to a free Tibet has deeply encouraged me the way they're cautioning, you know, they keep on ask, asking uh, how the education can contribute, you know, with the education, how they can contribute to the Tibetan cause. So you, when you have this kind of questions from the young school kids, you feel encouraged, inspired as well. And uh, we also visited some of the, you know, uh, kindergarten school uh, students, kids, and many, I, from where I saw some of the drawings, you know, when I was arrived in Tibetan, admitted in Tibetan uh, school Suja back then in 2000s, you know, uh, the drawing you see is the tent, uh, then the, you know, yaks, sheep, horse, and the grassy grounds and the, the high standing mountains, you know, pillars of the mountains and clouds, you see all of them. But when I visit there on the board, it was only the uh, house, which are the similar to the Indian structure. And then, uh, you know, surroundings, which are Indian, you know, uh, culture related surroundings so that worries me a bit because when we were told to draw a home we were able to draw everything what Tibet is you know either it's environmentally or the surroundings around you but there I came to know that I'm not too sure it's true or not but the, if the children they have no idea no vision about their home then uh, the future struggle will be difficult. They should have, uh, you know, imagination in their mind that they have, there is a, you know, different home for them. There is a, a country called Tibet. They should have this vision a called Tibet, a country called Tibet, then tent, yaks, sheep, and all the mountains, the rivers. But uh, I didn't see that vision from the those kids maybe they are too small but they should have the you know if they have the ability to draw then they should have the uh, ability to think about the uh, the home country so i think it's, it is the responsibility of every parents uh, and every individual to make their child you know uh, understand about their country their home not the the home where they were born the country which is left behind the you know high the mountains, they should, you know, the parents, the elder generation, they have to make sure that their children have a vision of home, the Tibet. So that uh, worries me a bit. Other than that, uh, we had a good interaction with our uh, regional chapters. We discussed about, you know, the issues related with the uh, strengthening TYC campaign activities, then uh, making how we can make them, you know, inclusive in our campaign activities, etc. So, it was a good uh, experience overall. And, you know, the way they received us is, uh, you know, very uh, hospitable and uh, it's inspiring and encouraged me deeply. Definitely, so I'm like, the interesting point about, you know, the drawings, like even I remember when I was in school, like that was a normal drawing that we used to do, you know, we used to put those mountains, those rivers and some tents 
for yaks will draw a normal curve. So, yeah, I think some something or the other may be changing, and something is wrong in our you know way of communicating, especially with the younger generation. So, yeah, very interesting point that you brought up when you were touring the northeast region of India. So, Sunamla, this year in particular, you know, 2023, everybody knows that this is going to be a year when the People's Republic of China will be tested because of its uh, COVID crisis, economic growth, low birth rate, and even the rising question on its own president, who in, in a way, you know, secured an unprecedented third term, like for Xi Jinping. So, what plans, including uh, like lobbying with decision makers, does the TYC have for this year in tackling and solving the Tibet-China conflict? So we all know that the change is coming with coming of the COVID-19 from the Chinese city of Wuhan. And now the world is looking sus suspiciously over China and many of the well-to-do families in China itself, they are making their way to the West. And uh, we have witnessed uh, a rape, one man protest in China, and then the uh, white paper revolution um, demanding Xi Jinping step down. Uh, so even in Beijing, you know, the uh, Chinese they, themselves, they are shouting, uh, they don't want to be subject. And even in Tendu, the Chinese protesters, they are shouting, they don't want emperors. So their common voice is clear that they, uh, they are not satisfied they are not satisfying with the current communist system and the current leaderships and they have no faith in the current Chinese system and they're waiting for an opportunity to you know raise their voice and that has come during the COVID so all of them are coming out and uh, uh, demanding the she's stepped on and demanding a democracy uh, and that is a good change so even if we look at the international platform, you know, international political scenario, and then the protest eruption in China, I think it's our opportunity uh, to amplify our voice. So accordingly, TYC, we have organized protest events in, in the end of the last year. And then in the coming months, we are planning to do many campaign activities to amplify the voice of the Tibetans inside Tibet. And, uh, you know, the situation inside Tibet is deteriorating every year. Either it's in human rights violations or it, it's related with the environment and everything. So we are planning to do a lot of campaign activities, particularly aiming to uh, internationalize the issue of Tibet, China issue Tibet. And we also we are also planning to do a chapter visit uh, in Tibetan communities, so so to inculcate, you know, a sense of patriotism, a sense of activism among the Tibetans. Uh, if we lost this sense, then I don't think there will be, uh, you know, a spark in our uh, struggle. So to do that, we are planning to do our chapter visit in many of the Tibetan communities, including schools, uh, which is very important. And then the uh, G20 and some other events are coming up in later this year. So we are planning a lot of uh, campaign and protest activities. Definitely, Sonam. And uh, I think one thing, a current ongoing campaign is the uh, campaign against Thermo Fisher, right? I think even TYC yes, yes. is part of it. So could you yes. elaborate a bit on that? Uh, what Thermo Fisher, the American-based uh, biotech company, is doing inside Tibet. What business does it have to be in Tibet, you know? Yes, so there is issue that the Chinese, they are collecting uh, mass DNA from the Tibetans, even from the, you know, six-year-old kids. More than one million Tibetans' DNA is stored in, they, it's already in the hand of the Chinese Communist government. So there will be Tibetans whose DNA is with the Chinese government, they will be not safe in future. And, you know, this project, they will continue to do so. So we are protesting again the same. And Thermo Fisher, we, the, they are using the, you know, the DNA gadgets, which are, you know, uh, the products of the Thermo Fisher. So we are demanding the Thermo Fisher uh, not to sell those DNA gadgets to China, even when they, you know, they buy, they have some rules and regulations that they have to, you know, adhere to. But the Chinese, they are not, you know, adhering the rules and regulations. Even if they are using the gadget, they should make the, you know, uh, permission. They should have the 
consent of the general public, the public that you have our consent to collect DNA, but they, without those consent, they are collecting forcefully. So this is uh, totally uh, against the rules and regulations of the, those gadgets. And uh, because of which uh, we are demanding and many of uh, TYC and other, you know, organizations all across the world, collectively, we are demanding Thermo Fisher to stop selling those gadgets, you know, those products to China, which is not uh, adhering to the rules and regulations of how to use those gadgets. And hopefully uh, we will stop it. Indeed, Sonamla, like... One thing I've seen in social media is how people comment on this particular movement that we Tibetans organization are, you know, spearheading like uh, even DNAs are being collected in our country. But the question, main question here is consent and which you, you know, beautifully highlighted. Without consent, you can't do anything like at the end of the day, it's a right of an individual, which at the end of the day is what the Chinese government, especially its communist regime, does not respect. So, yeah. Thank you for enlightening us about this very particular movement, which has been, you know, the attention of the whole world for the past year, especially since the onset of the COVID pandemic. So, Sonamla, like, uh, I think uh, we are short on time. And finally, I would like to request or ask you whether you have any messages to our fellow Tibetans and the plethora of Tibet supporters around the world who continue to stand in solidarity with us Tibetans when it comes to the Tibet-China conflict? Uh, the message to my fellow uh, Tibetans, my fellow countrymen is simple, you know, let's keep Tibetan Tibetans in our hearts and be a voice of the voiceless Tibetans in Tibet. In that sense, we all have a responsibility and we all are capable enough to contribute something to our cause. It, in any way, in any mediums. So we all are capable enough to contribute to our cause. And so I urge my countrymen, my fellow Tibetans to make your contribution by keeping in faith that our contribution matters in fulfilling the aspirations of the Tibetans in Tibet, in regaining the rightful independence of Tibet. I, I also want I also want to remind my countrymen, Tibetans, fellow Tibetans, that the Chinese system is not flexible and tolerant enough to accommodate different ideas and cultures. So uh, don't expect them to make changes for our benefits. We have to take and we have to claim what is ours. The situation inside Tibet is deteriorating year by year with the implementation of more and more hardline policies, arresting more and more Tibetans with, you know, baseless allegations. So it's our duty to amplify the voice of the Tibetans inside Tibet. So, and for our foreign supporters, I, on behalf of the Tibetan Youth Congress and Tibetans all around the world, extend our heartfelt gratitude for the solidarity and support. Uh, you are not only supporting the you know, Tibetan cause, you are holding to the truth and justice. So if Tibet regains its rightful independence, then the winner will be, uh, the victors will be for justice and truth. So you are supporting truth and justice. So thank you and keep supporting our cause because it's a just cause and we won't forget the support and solidarity of our foreign foreigns when foreign friends when we regain our rightful independence that's it definitely. thank you definitely Sonam. such a wonderful message you know to conclude things up it's been an honor to have you on our podcast Sonam Siring. thank you thank you all. thank you Damdila for having me thank you more updates and videos by FNA click on the link Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.